Hi everyone, welcome to the WSO2 Identity Server Access Delegation with OR2 training video. In this video, we are going to discuss about OR2 and its concepts. Let's begin by understanding what Access Delegation is. With Access Delegation, you can authorize an application to access your resources on your behalf. It enables you to permit an entity to execute limited actions based on the need. These permissions can also be easily revoked at any time to prevent further access. To understand access delegation a bit more, let's take an example. Let's consider the functionality of a master key and a valet key. The master key enables you to control all the access points of your vehicle, including the glove box and the boot. However, the valet key only supports functionality that is sufficient for a valet to park the car and has no access to the glove box or the boot. It only allows opening the driver's door and starting the car. Therefore, with the valet key, you are delegating the car parking to a valet with limited access to a car. Let's take another example. Let's say that you are using an application called Memory Lane to manage your photographs and another application called FaceMaker to edit your photographs. The photographs you upload to Memory Lane will be stored in its image repository, which is the resource server, while its authentication and authorization module, which is known as the authorization server, will grant you access to the photographs that are stored in its resource server. Similarly, the FaceMaker application has two components called the authorization server and the resource server. Imagine a scenario where you want to edit the photographs that are stored in Memory Lane using FaceMaker. To do this, FaceMaker requires access to the Memory Lane's resource server. The simplest way to do this is to provide the login credentials to the FaceMaker application so that FaceMaker can directly access the photographs in the Memory Lane service. This is similar to how users gain access by providing login credentials. But this is not a secure mechanism as there is no guarantee about what FaceMaker will do to your photographs. The worst case scenario is that FaceMaker can even delete your photographs without your consent. To avoid this, we need to grant limited access to FaceMaker. Similar to valet keys, if we can get a token from the memory lane service with limited access, we can give that token to the FaceMaker application to access the photographs without performing any restricted operations. To do this, as a user, you can first authenticate with the memory lane service and request a token with limited access. Then, that token can be handed over to the FaceMaker application. Using this new token, the FaceMaker application can access the photographs. Now that you know the importance of access delegation, let us explore OR2, the de facto standard for access delegation. OR2.0 is the industry standard lightweight protocol used for secure access delegation. It enables applications to access resources without having to use the end user's account credentials at the application. This mechanism generates tokens with limited access to facilitate accessing resources securely. OAuth is not just a standard, it is an extensible framework to implement new access delegation use cases. OAuth 2 has four key roles, namely resource owner, client application, authorization server, and a resource server. The resource owner holds a user account in an application and owns certain resources stored in that application. For example, John Doe has a user account in the memory lane application. The client application is a web or a mobile application that accesses your resources on your behalf. FaceMaker is such an application. The authorization server authenticates the resource owners using their credentials. Some popular authorization servers in the world are Facebook and Google. In this example, the memory lane authorization module is acting as an authorization server. The resource server stores all the actual resources. Dropbox, Google Drive, and Facebook are some popular resource servers. In this example, the memory lane image repository acts as the resource server. 
In some scenarios, the authorization server and resource server can be the same entity, such as Facebook. In our example, the memory lane application has two different modules to represent the authorization server and resource server. Let's look at the sample scenario in detail. As previously discussed, granting full access for FaceMaker is not a secure measure as we might encounter security concerns. When the resource owner, John Doe, wants FaceMaker to access the resources in memory lane, FaceMaker redirects John Doe to the memory lane authorization server. The memory lane authorization server checks whether John Doe has consented to allow FaceMaker to access the resources. For this, John Doe will have to log into memory lane, authenticate himself, and consent FaceMaker to access the memory lane resource server. In return, the memory lane authorization server sends an access token to the FaceMaker client application. Next, the FaceMaker client application attempts to access the memory lane resources where the access token gets passed on to the memory lane resource server. The memory lane resource server sends the access token back to the memory lane authorization server and gets it validated. Once the access token is validated, the memory lane resource server allows the FaceMaker client application to access the memory lane resources. In order to identify the granted access privileges, we can use a parameter called scope. Scopes allow to define the exact access privileges that can be used to do different actions on the resources or the data that can be accessed. With the authorization request, the FaceMaker client application sends the access privileges it requires under the scope parameter. Depending on the scope definition, the resource owner can decide whether to approve or reject the request. With this method, when the resource server verifies the token validity with the authorization server, you can get to know the resources that need to be shared and the permissions that need to be granted. For security reasons, the access token has a validity period. If the access token validity period is configured as 30 minutes, it cannot be used to access resources beyond that time period. So every time the access token expires, FaceMaker will have to request for a new access token and the resource owner will have to provide consent. This is not a user-friendly approach in some cases, and that's when the refresh token comes into the picture. When a client application sends an authorization request, it can get a refresh token from the authorization server, which can later be used to refresh the access token. When the access token expires, the client application can send a silent request to the authorization server to refresh the access token. In return, the authorization server will send a fresh access token. Let's learn about OAuth 2 token types and grant types. An OAuth token can either be an access token that has a limited lifespan and is used by the client applications to access the resource, or a refresh token that has a longer lifespan and is used by the client application to renew the access tokens. The tokens in OAuth can be of one of the following two types, OPEC and JOT tokens. An OPEC token is a random string that works as an identifier for a session and contains no meaningful information. When a client presents an OPEC token, the server uses an endpoint called the introspection endpoint in the authorization server to validate the OPEC token. The introspection endpoint returns information such as validity of the token and the associated scopes and the server fulfills the client's request based on it. JSON Web Tokens, or JOT, on the other hand, are self-contained, which means the token contains all the necessary information about the user's session in an encrypted form. JOT tokens are digitally signed, allowing the recipient to verify their authenticity and integrity. Grant types determine how a client application should obtain access tokens and what security credentials are used to gain access to resources. Grant types are picked based on the client application type and the use case requirements. Authorization code, implicit, password, client credential, and refresh token are the initial grant types defined in the OAuth core specification.
Implicit and password grant types are not highly recommended to use under current security considerations. Grant types such as SAML to bearer, JOT bearer, and device flow are extended grant types in OWA 2.0 framework. We have now come to the end of this training video. Let's have a quick recap of what we learned from this training. First, we got to know the purpose of access delegation. Next, we learned about OWA2 concepts on a high level. Then, we looked at a sample scenario to understand how OWA2.0 works. If you have any questions or need further clarification, feel free to get in touch with us through the following channels. Our email is iam-dev at wso2.org. In Stack Overflow, you can tag your queries with wso2-identity-server, or you can join our Discord server using the following invite. Thanks for watching this video. Hope to meet you in another exciting training video.